Good afternoon. Those people that are still finding a seat, please do so quietly. Okay, good afternoon, North Penn. Um, I will be up here for 20 seconds because I don't think this needs much of an introduction. These students have been planning for months under the guidance of Ms. Dieg and Ms. Manning. Um, I saw the dress rehearsal the other day. It's absolutely outstanding. I ask that you be respectful, put away your phones, and enjoy this production that was created, written, and produced by your peers. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Charnel Thompson and John Klein. Good morning, everyone. My name is Charnel Thompson. And my name is Jonathan Klein, and we are part of the African American Awareness Club Executive Board. Welcome to the 2016 Colors of Pride Black History Month Assembly. Our goal today is to not only entertain you, but to educate you and enlighten you on the history of African Americans in our country. At this time, we ask that you please stand for the singing of Lift Every Voice and Sing, also known as the Black National Anthem by Kaylee Cooper and Kenia Washington. Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven ring Ring with the harmonies of liberty Let our rejoicing rise High as the listening skies Let it resound loud as the roar Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory. Many times in our history books and throughout our education, we are introduced to the African-American culture through the lens of slavery. Although slavery was an enormous tragedy that impacted African-Americans, slavery was not the first time when people of color were presented in our history. Afro-Caribbean are people who trace their heritage to sub-Saharan Africa in the period of time predating Christopher Columbus. Part of the Afro-Caribbean culture was interpreted through dance, a dance with African roots fused with multicultural influences of the Caribbean.
When we think back to the time of slavery, no one can argue the significance that it played in the building of our nation. For black men and women, slavery was an equally devastating experience. Both were torn from homeland and family, both, both were forced to perform grueling labor, subject to mental and physical harm, and denied their most basic rights. Enslaved men and women were beaten mercilessly, separated from loved ones, and regardless of sex, treated as property in the eyes of the law. However, for white men and women, slavery was a vital part of continuing their way of life. For white men and women, slavery ensured that their homes were taken care of, their children were provided for, and the financial contribution to their families were steady. Sometimes we wonder, if we had a slave and a slave owner in today's time, what would they say to each other? You are my property. You having a hard time remembering? You thinking that man upstairs is finally answering the praise you requested? I hear all your cries in the sky because it's your God I invented. So when you die, your spirit will rise to a slave ship, and that'll be your ride to heaven. And when you arrive on that setting, you'll see a golden throne and be reminded of past places. But your history was washed away in the middle past and you can't trace it. So in your throne, I'll be a white man waiting with his hand shaking, face waving all of your promised land payments and Satan staying wasted off your humorous damnation. Cause we got another black man to believe that heaven is something more than just another plantation. And to my kind, this is center stage in the entertainment, but it's what you black folk call fate. It's like your stained skin is your slave linen. Got you hooked to bait pit and now you grave digging false faith. And if you ever reach your hand and try to escape, the last thing you'll hear is your siblings' tears before your coffin drop. Just to remind them that their sole purpose is to harvest crops and you never look down to a white unless you stand it on an auction block. Now, master, I can see you need some redefining. Realizing and watching you spanking until we lifeless. Why you don't like us? We are brothers in God's image. Is God dingy? Or are you too cold to even listen? My kind differ. Taking the pain that y'all give us. Praying for better times. You won't do it to all children of God's children. No pedestal was ever given to any color of man. So the righteous forever stand. And faith be to the kingdom as equal becomes to land. From cotton fields to row homes. Barn yards to barrows. Falling pharaohs. Just to be scraping up both my elbows. As far as that goes. Walking our shoes. You went last. You a coward doing officer dues. Walk in your shoes? Fine. Not one thing will change a bit. As plain as this, you're in the bottom of the same ship. I mean, who's more evil? The man with the chains and whips? A one who can hear his own mother being raped and never raise a fist. And I know exactly why you're afraid of this. Say you need to give your rapes a lift from the grave you in and turn around and treat the white man as your greatest gift. Look at you. You think you amount to something more than only half a man? That you have a greater purpose for walking on these lavish lands of New Amsterdam? That you would run this place a whole lot different if you simply had the chance where you could keep on dreaming, but there's no escape in this maze of a master plan. Let me break it down. From ripping the lives of Indian tribes, we got the native to go. And during that slot, I brought you here as labor on boats. Created a code of law, not a single one came to your folk. Fed you a crumb from the feast, and now it's in your nature to boast? Funny. Because even if you manage to escape from the ropes, we're going to have you chasing paper with the faces that would hate you the most. Escape from the rope and hope better for lives. You can head a pot for now, but all I see God, but yours be blind. Say your evil's lesser than mine when you tearing the purest flesh and hearing all of the cries. In time you rape, but you hate faith the same, it won't change. On a plane with a change, and what's become the casual things? No room for debates. I sent you notice something so great, but look. In this village, not a soul you can take, but break the bones and pave the way for the future. Be road today, I'll take every beat in my kin had accumulated. The stain be rejuvenated, my body and inner psyche are full of hatred. But I don't hate you though, I'ma pray cause Lord knows. Tight thoughts while I sleep, ethnicity in one row. Stomach touching back cause food, you only gave us one row. But we all have one hope, views from different ohos by the boatloads. Erasing the segregation, make new homes. But listen though, hard times don't last forever. So your reign will be deceased and your defeat will be on feet. The chains unleashed and we'll be free. Your motherland, oh sweet land, home of the free. So give me everything you got because it's the last you take of me. When most Americans think of the civil rights movement, they have in mind a span of time beginning with the 1954 Supreme Court's decision in Brown versus the Board of Education, the Montgomery bus boycott, and culminated in the late 1960s, early 1970s. 
Another aspect of the civil rights movement included sit-ins, a nonviolent measure employed by Martin Luther King Jr., which helped African-American activists win supporters across the country and throughout the world. Now let's see what our North Penn students had to say when asked, what is a sit-in? Like you sit in a building and you eat food. You sit inside for a cause. It's like a boycott. You basically, you just stay in the area and you refuse to move. That's what I think it is. It's like um, when you, it's like a form of protest when you like sit and uh, don't move and like, you know, stay quiet. And, uh, yeah, that's when it happened in a restaurant. Yep. Today, if you want a cup of coffee, you walk in, order, and sit down and drink your coffee. Pretty simple. In 1960, it was a different story. The 60s were an amazing time in American history. The space race had begun, the internet would be invented, handheld calculators and computers would be available. But something as simple as a cup of coffee was far more complicated. On February 1st, 1960, four college students went to the Woolworth store, purchased some items, then sat down at the lunch counter to order coffee. They were denied service because of the color of their skin. The manager asked them to leave. The students decided to stay, seated, politely waiting for their coffee until closing time. The next day, the four students, Joseph McNeil, Franklin McCain, Ezel Blair Jr., and David Richmond, returned, ordered coffee again, and were refused again. But the students knew it would mean jail time or worse. But this simple act of ordering a cup of coffee shouldn't be criminal, and it shouldn't be life-threatening. The four students, who would eventually be called the Greensboro Four, would be joined by 20 other students that day, just sitting there, reading books and studying while white customers continued to heckle them. On day three, more than 60 students joined in. On day four, there were 300 people at the lunch counter. After one week, students were staging their own sit-ins throughout North Carolina. Soon, the movement spread to other southern cities than states. On July 25, 1960, Woolworth finally relented and black employees of Greensboro Woolworth store were the first to be served at the store's lunch counter. The next day, the entire Woolworth chain was desegregated, serving blacks and whites alike. The sit-ins would eventually spread to other forms of public accommodation. And in 1964, the Civil Rights Act was passed, mandating desegregation in public accommodations. The Greensboro, North Carolina Woolworth store is now the International Civil Rights Center and Museum. And a section of the lunch counter in which the four students sat is now preserved in the Smithsonian National Museum of American History, serving as a reminder of our past when the color of your skin prohibited you from just sitting down at a lunch counter and ordering a cup of coffee. In today's society, there is still an unfortunate perception about what it means to be considered black. Although for some, being black is defined as something powerful and something to be said with pride, for many or most, to be black is to be aggressive, obnoxious, and ghetto. Even when it comes to dialect, to be blacker is seen as a way of speaking in an improper manner. As, as, as for students of color here at North Penn, and for people of color in general, it can be frustrating just going through the day-to-day -day routines. Remember to be professional, bro. Yeah, trust me, I'm, I got this. I'm just gonna do my thing. Yeah, I mean, you know how it is getting them hollow back and back. Yeah, bro, I was ready for this, though. Yeah. Okay, Jamal, up next. Oh, shoot, that's right. okay. Thank you. Hello, Jamal. So you're just going to read your lines, and my assistant here is going to read them with you. OK, sounds great. Ready when you are. Hey, Lamar, did you remember to pick up those party supplies from Crazy City? Yeah, isn't that what I went there for? OK, I like how you follow the lines, but can you freestyle a little bit? I know how you people like to freestyle. Oh, OK, you mean ad lib? Yeah, I can do that. 
Hey Lamar, did you remember to pick up those party supplies from Crazy City? Yeah, how could I forget? That's all I went there for. Okay, that was better than the last one, but could you be a little bit more urban for us? Uh, yeah, sure. Great, I'm gonna start, please. Hey Lamar, did you remember to pick up those party supplies from Crazy City? Yeah, bro, that's all I went there for. I'm not gonna forget. Okay, that was the best one so far, but can you be a little, uh, blacker for us? Blacker? What does that even mean? Well, you know, like, ghetto and stuff. I guess I could do that for now. Hey, Lamar, did you remember to pick up those party supplies from Crazy City? Yeah, bro, I got them jokes for the low low, too. I was like, yo, that's a deal. Well, I think we have it. Wow, I just knew you had potential for this part. I knew he was gonna be good just by the name. Mm -hmm. Wow, thank you, thank you. So did I get the part? Yes, you got the part. Okay, congratulations. On the way out, my secretary will be there for you to pick up your information. Okay, will do. Thank you for having me. Oh, so did you get the part? Yeah, I got the part, but it was like, act black. What that mean? Yo, I asked a lady, bro. She was like, just act ghetto and stuff. So what you doing? I mean, I just did, but I can't believe people still profile black people like that in 2016, bro. Come on. That job crazy. As you can see, there can be many misconceptions about being a person of color. We hope to have shed light upon newfound ideas views, and the history of a beautiful culture that is too often misrepresented by the public eye of America. From the times of tribal kings and queens, slavery, civil rights, and even in our current state, we hope to have shown you all a different perspective, one filled with positivity and knowledge. Since our halls flow with such a large and diverse group of people, North Penn serves as an ideal microcosm of American society. They say I'm loud. They say I'm angry. They say I'm lazy and disrespectful. They say I'm a lover of fried chicken and watermelon. They say I'm a natural athlete, not an intelligent athlete. They say I'm from the hood and blame everything on race. But I'm loud so that I can be heard. Don't ignore me, I have something to say. I may appear angry many times because I have to fight to be equal. I am not lazy, but beaten down and misunderstood. I am not disrespectful, but tired of being ignored. Beaten down, maybe I am misunderstood. I may like fried chicken and watermelon, or maybe I've never had it. But why does that matter? It does not define who I am. Am I an athlete with natural talent? Or did I work hard, practice often, and study my craft to become the talented athlete that I am? Maybe I have no athletic ability, but I too study the inner workings of the body, history, music, or trends in society that is my interests drive my learning. If I'm from the hood, then everyone from North Penn is from the hood. The fact is, we are all from a neighborhood. I don't blame everything on race but many privileges and disadvantages are due to race. That's the way I see it, and perception is reality. Get to know me for who I am and not for what they say I am. One day when the glory comes, it will be ours. When the war is won, we will be sure, we will be sure, oh, glory. Glory, glory, oh, glory, glory. One day, when the glory comes, 
On behalf of the entire African American Awareness Club, we would like to thank Mr. Bauer, all Home Office Assistant Principals, Ms. Manning, Ms. Jacqueline Turner, Ms. Lenora, Mr. Gilmer, Ms. Fakish, Ms. Miller, and Mr. Greg Weirman. We also would like to, f to thank the following departments, FCS, Nutritional Services, Facilities, Audiovisual, and all other staff and faculty that granted us their attention for our performances and presentations this afternoon. Mr. Bauer. Yes. I think it's appropriate to give one more round of applause for our students today. Before we dismiss, I would also like to acknowledge Ms. Dieg and Ms. Manning, if they would stand. It's, it's not easy to get up. It's not easy to get up in front of your peers, um, and it's not easy to stand up and say some of the things that they did, but they've worked so hard. Their message was wonderful. I'm very proud of their performance. So one more round of applause, please.